Is this a metal thing? Yes. Oh, taste. David. David. David, what is this? Hello, everybody. Welcome to Horror Movie Talk. Your panel of expert hosts each week are me. I'm Dr. Bryce Hansen. I hold a PhD in spookology. And across from me sits Professor David Day, the foremost expert in scare no-nos. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if anyone is uh, worried about Horror Movie Talk after kind of being uh, teased that we're going through some struggles specifically david is going through some struggles with watching horror movies uh we want to reassure you at the top of the show everything's gonna be all right it's gonna be okay guys (laughs) everything it's it's panning out real good (laughs) we don't have specifics to share or like uh specifically what we're gonna do we might talk a little bit more about it on the after pod for patrons but um so i think so regardless regardless to say i think we have identified a way forward um there will be some changes with horror movie talk on how we do things and i think in the end it's going to be better for for listeners good changes slick changes sexy changes i like that i like that i like that um where are the bodies garth um (laughs) But we don't have to talk too much about that. Just rest assured that Horror Movie Talk is still going to be around. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we've got a great show today, though. We're going to review The Final Girls from 2015. Before we do that, just want to mention our website, HorrorMovieTalk.com. And, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, my God. Are you serious? That, Are you serious? This is like called regression. This is called regression. This is a regression. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I wow. apologize. Wow. I, wow. That's not the person that I am, and hmm. I vow to do better <laughs> going forward. Interesting. And I apologize to those that I've hurt. You know, though, watching. I was thinking as we were listening to the intro music, I was like, th- it's good that we have this intro music because it really probably does a quack. <laughs> excellent job of weeding out the people who i mean that's the most shocking part of the show for sure (laughs) right it was a little i mean with the original one where it ends with belching is probably the the better like intro but you know we're trying to evolve and get better and you know again i apologize but we haven't been belching as much so you Mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. we're we're trying our best Mm mm-hmm um want to thank our new patrons on our patreon you can check us out on patreon.com slash horror movie talk but want to thank uh cory s and amy h um we got andrew m i think that was yeah no patreon's been a little wiggy for me in that regard so Const- yeah big apologies if we're missing anybody i can't tell you that patreon's been a little bit yeah little Consta bit. h charles c mitch p ariana l yep thank you so much for for being patrons and supporting the show um we love we you. appreciate you we post new episodes every wednesday for free for everyone so continue listening to that if you have a phone number call us at 682-253-4468 we start out every episode by giving a brief review and our score for the movie we score on a scale of one to ten one being a miserable dredge where it makes you angry five being an average film that hits all the expected marks and ten being so good it transcends genre boundaries Mm mm-hmm after we give our score, we'll get into a spoiler section and kind of delineate that for you with an audio cue and a video cue so you can bounce if you haven't seen the film. 
Um, and then later on, it's a very special episode because we have a special guest that we'll be interviewing that will join us for a game at the end as well. Oh. We're interviewing Emily Hagens, uh, which is a uh, she's a writer, director, uh, filmmaker of horror movies. Uh, you might have seen her work on Shudder and has a really interesting story how she got into filmmaking. Uh, we'll have an interview with her and then. We'll end the show with our final girl quiz, new game, where we Ooh. quiz David and Emily about final girl trivia. Oh, I love it. Um, I love it. So yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. We watched The Final Girls. It's available for rent wherever you rent movies. I watch it on Amazon. You don't have to. You can watch it somewhere else. I don't care. In this film, Max, the daughter of a struggling horror film actress, is grieving after her mother's untimely real death three months, three years prior. Uh, her friend's tone-deaf stepbrother, played by Thomas Middleditch, insists that Max attend his double-feature screening of Camp Bloodbath, the film that made her mother a star. While attending with her friends, a disaster happens and they escape through the movie theater screen. In proper movie logic, they somehow... Uh, by doing so, step into the reality of Camp Bloodbath, an obvious stand-in for Friday the 13th. They soon realize that they are trapped until they can navigate to the end of the film and survive the machete-wielding masked killer. This is another horror, uh, another meta-horror comedy that seems to be tempting the success of the previous, uh, previously released Cabin in the Woods and Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. In comparison... Uh, this one's pretty lackluster, but mostly because those two mentioned movies are some of the best horror comedies ever made. Uh, however, uh, this film does have its charm and is an enjoyable watch. The one difference in style that The Final Girls uses um, is the 80s fantasy logic and doesn't really bother with realism. Uh, this gives him a little more wiggle room to have fun with the slasher formula. And um, the one thing that I'd say, like, and one of the reasons why I wanted to watch it was in the cast was Adam Devine and Tom Thomas Middleditch. And I did expect it to be funnier than it was. Um, it is funny. It has funny moments, but it's not like... It's not as funny as it could be. It was, I mean, there were, it wasn't a laugh a minute or anything. Um, and I think they kind of wasted those the casting. Like, they could have done a lot more. Those those two, I know that they let them improv a little, and a lot of what they did improv is in the film. But, man, they could have done a lot more, I think. Um, they only go after the easy jokes around the genre and don't play as much as they could with the archetypal characters or the slasher absurdities. Again, it's really easy to compare it to cabin in the woods. And I think they did a little bit of a better job and a little more interesting, um, in those films, but you kind of get what you expect. It ends up being surprisingly predictable, mm. um, but not unenjoyable. I give it a score of six out of 10. Yeah. Fair. Um, <clears throat> you know, as I was watching this, I thought, wow, this is, this is a real kind of interesting sort of like eighties effort at, um, a new kind of meta, meta take, you know, it's like you got the scream meta take that you see copied everywhere. Right. But this is Which a, is, it's a horror movie where. Everyone have seen horror movies, and so right. they comment on the genre throughout, which is, in my opinion, the most annoying version of this. Right. But like Cabin in the Woods, uh, this one takes a fresh, new, even more meta approach to the thing and tries to meta the meta and um, and does a decent job of that. Like, in, 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 in its premise, it's original and interesting. Um which is what everybody says they want, you know, give me something new, give me something original. I don't want the same thing that's been done to death. It's paired up with the thing that's been done to death, right? It's paired up directly with Friday the 13th. 
Um, so, and you know, basically every other, every other slasher that's ever been made. But, uh, yeah, it does at the start, you got this real, real impressive inclusion of Adam Devine and Thomas Middleditch who are, I mean, I don't think there's, I don't think anybody's going to argue that they are comedically and improv wise, there are two separate flavors and they go good together like vanilla and chocolate. You know, it's like this is a real good pair of of comedic minds who can really throw some incredible improv out there and do for that first act, maybe maybe first part of the second act as well. But after that, um, boy, they just do it's real – it's it's it is just too bad uh that they don't lean on that more because uh and and don't get me wrong um you know Angela Trimber uh one of the one of the camp counselors who's a very Im- impressively different looking uh actress um just notably uh sharp features uh facial features anyway she does a great job. There's others who do a great job. Like the acting is really pretty, pretty darn good in this thing. It's just, you got, yeah, you didn't play with it enough. I think, I think that's, that's the sin that this thing commits, but it is fun. It is, it is a lot of fun. You're gonna, I mean, this is a pretty light and breezy. You're going to have a, a, a pretty good time uh, with it. And, uh, and that's, you know, that's great. Um, you even got maybe from, you know, Arrested Development. I, I can't recall her name right off the bat. Oh, Aliyah Shawkat. Yeah. I mean, it's got recognizable people. Um, Taysa Farmiga was in The Nun. Uh, Malin Ackerman, um, was in The Watchmen. Yeah. Uh, Nina Dobrev. I can't remember what she's in. Um, I kind of fell in love with her on her appearance on Conan. Um, and yeah, the ones already mentioned. Look, good good um uh, good cast. Yeah. Did a did a good job and, you know, the moments that were scripted and the 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 funny moments were sold really well. Yeah. Like there's they they just they didn't go as hard as they could have no, into they, the into the comedy. Yeah, they fell into a slasher. It just it stopped being the interesting thing around the middle point of the second act and just became a slasher that had that was still like floating on this concept, um, which I mean, it's it's just so annoying because it's like at the, the start of the movie, you're like, oh, wow, this is dialed. They they've done it like they've right. they've really got some good talent in here. They got good writing. Um, but they just kind of squandered it by killing them off so fast. And, uh, and maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I agree with your score though. I'm going six out of 10 as well. Yeah. It's, it's delightful. Uh, and then it, uh, and then it just kind of drags on the way a slasher does. Yeah. I will say like the emotional core of the movie with, with Max and, um, her mother is great. Like, yeah, that's there. Um, I think that that was like put in there really well. I, I think they just should have expanded some of the side stories and side characters and stuff there. But this is all, I mean, this is honestly a little nitpicky. It's more of yeah. like a style thing than anything. Like it is a good movie. It's oh, well yeah. put together. It's well executed. It's just, you know, in contrast with some of the other meta horror comedies that have come out recently, it's like, it just comes off as kind of meh. It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah in everyone in this had great chops. Like, everyone in this was pulling their weight and was excited to be there. You know, you could really yeah. tell that nobody was phoning it in and everybody was having a good time. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just the 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 writing just kind of <laughs> petered out there. Yeah, and there's a, we'll get into that in spoilers, some of the reasons why that might have been happening uh with the movie but before we get into spoilers uh i want to take a moment and just sit right there let me tell you all about how i became the prince of horror movie talk um 
you know, if you're listening to commercials like before in the middle of the show, you don't have to be listening to those commercials. Oh, you have to go to Patreon. Go to Patreon, become a patron, and you'll get access to early released episodes without any of the ads, as well as just a embarrassment of riches of bonus content depending on what level you got but um even at you know a certain level i mean the most useful one is the after pod we leave the the mics running after the show and just talk about what's going on we'll talk about like what's in the future of horror movie talk and how we're planning on changing some things and um and go into our lives you can learn more about you know why we are the way we are and um that's probably one of the best reasons to get patreon so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna belabor the point go to patreon throw us a couple ducats and you get a lot of value out of it also go to our shop at horrormovietalk.com slash shop and uh, you can buy our logo tees and more check out our resident artist on instagram his name is dustin goble you'll find him at dgobel00 that's d-g-o-e-b-e-l-0-0 on instagram Ask him for a commission and make your artistic dreams come true. Tell him HMT sent you. Why not? If you want to leave us a voicemail, call 682-253-4468. Thank you so much for listening and being patient with us as we try to make a little money and send it off to the people we love. Let's get into spoilers. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty. You want to know it's really scary? What? So I was surfing around some bands and stuff like that, as I do, as I'm listening to music, and I saw a picture of uh, Robert Smith, one of the the member of The Cure, a recent picture. <laughs> Let's see it. Shit. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and... Robert Smith now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Oh, oh my. Okay, here we go. I'm going to share my screen over here. I'm gonna... <laughs> this is. Oh boy, man. Oh boy. <laughs> there you go. Is that some nightmare fuel or what? I'm sorry, Robert, man. You just got to like. I mean, you'd look good if you just went gracefully into that good night. Look. Oh man, there was a great. <laughs> Let me see if I could play this. This might be worth. Cause... Hold on. Let me do this. No, oh, it's just, it's just, in, it's just unfortunate. Look at, look at here. Watch look, this again. Look here. Unshare your screen. Let me, let me play. You this. unshare your screen, sir. This will be everything. Hi guys. Oh, thank you. Hey, how are you? I'm Carrie. It's so nice to meet you. Hi. Congratulations, The Cure Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees 2019. Are you as excited as I am? Um, by the sounds of it, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do? Um, I'm sure we'll get there eventually. It's a bit early, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it, I guess it is. Maybe we just need... <laughs> I love that clip. Okay, well, he's redeemed himself. I like it. By him. the sounds of it, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're going to uh, ask the lead singer of The Cure if he's excited. <laughs> a fucking amateur move. Hey, man, if you you know, are the lead singer of The Cure, it's not like you can just leave goth behind. Like, it's a commitment. <sighs> you got you to gotta do what you got to do. Yeah, like, and by the way, like, R Robert Smith, he's like laughing at me from piles and piles <laughs> of money. He's like, okay, guy. Yeah, he's listening okay. to you, and he's like, oh, no. Oh, no, it's not working for me anymore, David Day, of it's horror like... movie talk. <laughs> <laughs> Except these these are $100 bills. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> and he's sitting on a pile of money. Anyways, The Final Girls, um, kind of interesting in the, in the trivia. This film was conceived and co-written by Joshua John Miller as a way of dealing with the death of his dad, Jason Miller who starred as Father Karras in The Exorcist, which is also, kind of interesting. Also was the inspiration 
for inspiration for Jason Voorhees. Jason Miller, Jason Voorhees. Same, same, same. Mm, right, right. It's true. Same first name, so it's got to be connection there. Um, movie starts out with the trailer of the fake slasher Bloodbath. Or, sorry, Camp Bloodbath, um, which is an obvious takeoff of Friday the 13th. Um, and then Camp quickly Crystal goes, Lake. Yeah, Camp Crystal Lake in this one. In Camp Bloodbath, it's Cla- Camp Bluefinch. Whatever. Um, so it starts out with the um, the mother, uh, which was an actress in the Camp Bloodbath movies, played by Malin Ackerman, and her daughter, Tysa Farmiga. Um you know, and it's we're kind of given the information that um, her mother has kind of struggled since. You know, she's a struggling actress and mostly known from her horror movie uh, career. Um, and it's it's kind of the emotional core of the movie, um, and it begins very strongly with a car accident where the mother dies. Um, you know, within the first like five minutes of the movie, did you were you distracted by the CGI car stuff? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's weird when a movie. I mean, it's not weird. It's super normal <laughs> when a movie does this to itself, which is just like take the first ten minutes and take its foot, bring it way up here so that you can see it. Here's the foot, and then it's just like. Pew, pew, just shooting itself in the foot with bad CGI. Right. It's like, mm-hmm, okay. Yeah, it's go. weird. Like, the first inkling, it wasn't even the the uh, the crash. Like, there was a shot. It was an overhead shot, which would have been on, like, a dolly or, or a crane or something. And the, the car was driving underneath. And then all of a sudden, the, the camera snaps to being, like, the same velocity as the car. It's yeah. just like... It just felt like an impossible shot, and you're like <gasps> so jarring that you're like, "Oh, this is fake," you yeah. know. It's just like such a weird choice to make. And then when the car accident happens, it was very, very fake because it was like that computer CGI fake, gr- fake, uh, um, uh, physics. You know, it was like, yeah, a car would not flip around like that, and has the obvious, you know, like camera glare. <laughs> You know, it looked like a music video is what it was. It looked like if Britney Spears was going to have a car crash in one of her music videos, it would have looked like that. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm so glad that you, at the start of this, mentioned Britney Spears. First of all, wow, what an interesting arc she's got going over there on Instagram. (laughs) Okay, that's first of all. But second of all, when uh, Angela Trimber comes on the screen, I was like... (laughs) What? Like every part of my brain just was like, oh, Britney Spears is in this movie. Like I was just like, what is happening? She's got. It's something about this first shot when she's in the movie. It just tricked my brain. You know, I was just like, wait, Britney Spears is in this movie. She's just got that real cute young girl kind of like face like they just they their faces just mashed up perfectly in my head and uh, and i was like uh taken aback so jarringly uh but obviously it's, it's not britney spears it's angela trimber uh now i know it's angela trimber who is somebody who i don't know who she is she's somebody who can fake me into believing she's britney spears if there were a britney spears doc this girl to me would be like the way they did Pam in uh, in that one doc, like it's just like so dead on. You're like, ooh, wow! You watched that, didn't you? That Pamela. Yeah, yeah. That that's a really fascinating doc, and it's one of those where oh. easy now. Oh, this is Angela Trimber. She's not in anything. I mean, she's kind of recognizable, but she's not in anything that jumps out at me at me as like saying oh i know that's where i know her from mm-hmm. yeah here she is right here yeah that look. not britney spears no not britney spears mm. yeah 
Mm. Oh, Californication. Anyways, um, yeah, she she probably has one of the best moments, like at the end of the movie when she's like on <laughs> Adderall and trying to be like, because she's like the sex kitten. Yeah. Like her her character is kind of a takeoff on um the blonde in Halloween, oh. and kind of like the just there to like just be desperate to fuck every anything that moves you know <laughs> they like tape her clothes on her yeah. they're like no you can't take your clothes off and she's like <laughs> just itching they've got like they've got like mittens on her hands and have like a like a floaty or a, a life preserver on her and she's just like desperately pat pine <laughs> and stuff which is a great take um it's a very funny bit <clears throat> One of the pieces of trivia uh, about the script, it was originally optioned by New Line Cinema, but they wanted to eliminate all the deep character moments between uh, the mother and daughter daughter plot, which would have been weird. It would have been like the core of the movie. Um, and eventually it wound up being produced by Sony, which liked that aspect, but wanted it to be toned down to, be, to receive the PG-13 rating, which is also a compromise that kind of sucks. Like, because that's the other way. See... Again, if you're going to do a comedy horror, like you got to pick one and go all in on it. Like if you're going to lean into the horror, the the comedy, PG-13 is probably what you would go for, but definitely make it more of a comedy right. and less of a, a horror. Yeah. Um and then if you're going to go all in on the horror, like make it R, you know, and mm-hmm. like but it, it's kind of like a not not quite committed either way it does feel a little bit like um were you getting uh little, little, little flashbacks of happy death day on this one it did felt like it did feel kind of like oh this is the thing that made happy death day spark you know maybe yeah i mean i liked happy death day a lot more i think it worked, worked i do too more. i do too um and they it was funner like i think that's that's what it Happy Death Day was consistently more fun, but it's very similar in terms of using oh yeah, kind of the eighties fantasy logic of mm-hmm. like oh you know you got your switcheroo it's the you know what's the the vice versa or you know weekend at Bernie's it's like stuff flew a lot more <laughs> back then of like yeah just go with it just go they walk it. through the screen now they're in the movie shut up right yeah um, no that's that's a part of this that I really enjoy where it's like. Just shut up. Just go with right. it. And th- you just don't see that anymore in movies that much. You know, you just you don't get that element. Everything has to be so makes so much sense. But if it's just a fun romp, it's just a fun romp. And I do like that about this where it's just like, look, shut up. We're going on. We're doing a thing. It's going to be fun. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it starts out after, you know, we see the death of of the mother, and it's three years after that. Um, Thomas Middleditch is the stepbrother of her uh, her friend, and he is kind of tone deaf and like wants to force her into attending this double feature of Camp Bloodbath. And can't bloodbath too, and be like a special guest because she's the daughter of of the one of the stars, which is like, you know, to me not that impressive. Be like, yeah, I know someone that's related to uh, Bram Stoker. It's like, okay, who cares? Um, <laughs> but uh, she goes begrudgingly to this to this screening, and then a fire happens. And as they're running away, they find a random machete because, you know, that's just something that you'd bring to this movie. And they escape through the the theater screen. Does zero explanation. They just wake up in the movie yeah. in Camp Bloodbath, which is like, that's the way you do those it's, things. It's you know, incredibly it's, jarring for about 30 seconds. The right. audience is scrambling. They're like, wait. Wait, what? What? Wait, 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 wait. I missed something. But just just beyond that 30 seconds, they do a then it's a great great job of being right. of, of being like, oh, this is how this works. You get the rules right away. Yeah. 
because they're on the road and they get approached by the you know volkswagen van that is the opening of the camp bloodbath movie and it passes by him then it returns like every 92 minutes which is the runtime of the of the film and they figure out what's going on and that they're in the movie and then it's it's kind of a I love that. I love that part. I was like, <laughs> like at this point in the movie, I was like, w- wait, why is the v- it, it, 92 minutes later? And you're like, the first time you're like, I don't know what that, like, what? Right. And then the ca- the van comes by and you're like, oh, it's the same thing happening again. And they ask the same question and they answer differently and they react differently. And you're like. And then it says 92 minutes later again. And you're like, that's the length of a slasher film. Mm-hmm. That's the length of the movie. And so mm-hmm. you, it, it just, it just gives it to you. It's just like, here's the, here's the way it works. And you, it allows you to kind of put it together. And then they say it. <laughs> yeah. In case for you stragglers. <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is great. Cause it's also the exact length of the final girls movie as well i don't know if you caught that dun, 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 dun. Honk. um so you know, i don't have a lot of notes there's a couple notable moments but basically they they come in they say that they're camp counselors and and the the characters in this fake movie are kind of confused why they're there but accept them and it's all the slasher tropes of you know, everyone that has sex is going to die, and so they're trying to combat that and change it. Well, not just has sex, just acts promiscuously. Right. <laughs> right. So everybody's um, got to be, like, reserved as much as they can, and half of the characters can barely fucking help themselves. Right, yeah. Because they're just that. They're just characters that were built to be promiscuous. Right. Um, and the character, so Adam Devine plays Kurt. He's like the, the jock, which is an interesting choice to cast him for that. But he's, he's great comedically as that part. One of the best moments is like, <laughs> cause this is a based <laughs> off an 80 slasher. Um, the, the kind of love interest or the, the, the guy that's interested in Max, uh, played by Alexander Ludwig kind of confronts him for not being woke or not you know not treating um max with respect and he's like and then adam devine's character kurt goes like what are you a fag whoa (laughs) you You should have pulled uh, that clip because then you wouldn't have to say it (laughs) it's a quote it's not bad it is a quote but they don't know that (laughs) and uh and then that's one like one of the great moments is like them uh what's his what's his name uh chris the character chris like explains that his his dads are gay and <laughs> and kurt is like <laughs> breaks his brain is like how's that possible <laughs> gay guys can't have kids they just go out and party and that's actually a, and have sex and have a lot of sex they just party and have a lot of sex it's actually, it's actually a, a really cool interesting lifestyle lifestyle <laughs> yeah i wish they would have gone more into that and just like done a a pleasantville take on it where it's like these characters are a one way and then the influence of the outside or the modern world just kind of takes over and yeah changes them oh uh, man that's not a, enough time to do that in no. an hour and 30 minutes but that would have been fun to see kurt just go full gay there is enough the time to do that because this movie was made in 2015 and it used that word that you so horribly said out loud um and it, that's only eight years ago so and i mean you know pleasantville had enough time to do it in that amount of time it's i, I think i think that's a really a really cool take and i i would have liked to because you could have one character with that arc you know right. you could have one character who's like guys this is not okay <laughs> you know <Like>, right. <laughs> and then even even the people from the current day are like, okay, get over it. Like you're, you're going down a weird rabbit hole here. Trust me, this doesn't end up in a good place. Yeah, because they kind of did that in reverse with uh, yeah. Elias Shawkat's character Gertie, where she's just you know the the best friend of Max, and all of a sudden she's like giving into the pheromones mm-hmm. <laughs> around uh, 
the uh, yeah Blake. Blake character character, and is like all of a sudden like DTF. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> even though they know like this is a death sentence here. Yeah. Um, so that's that's fun. Um, the deaths are fun. Like Thomas Middleditch gets killed pretty early on. So unfortunate inside, in the movie. Yeah, it's weird. I mean they. They take the comedic core, the two characters that are the best comedic actors, and they kill them the first half of the movie. I mean, arguably, uh, I mean, to my mind, Angela Trimber, like, really fucking slayed. uh, Oh, yeah. She was great. And they kept her around almost until the end. But, yeah, two-thirds of basically the comedy troupe uh, was killed off real t- just t- way too fast and it's like yeah. was that a budget thing because i mean there's no doubt uh in 2015 adam divine and thomas middleditch were the most expensive people in this uh yeah in probably. this production so maybe it was a expense thing but real unfortunate <laughs> because yeah, yeah. I mean, they though the the moments that they made were hilarious they were hilarious and yeah. The best part of the movie is the credits at the end where you get to see the the outtakes of Adam Devine just slaying with right. his with his improv. And it's like, right. oh, oh, yeah, of course, the guy who does improv constantly is the best. Like, that's the guy you keep in till the end. Yeah, I think like one of the things they could have done was cast more comedic actors like all the actors did great but i think it would have added to the it would have to be a different movie but i was thinking like treat it like wet hot american summer Mm -hmm. just have a bunch of sketch players and like yeah kind of be more free with the with the stuff and it could be really great but yeah i don't want to undercut the the great moments that are in it and again we already talked about um angela trimber's moment but Everything with her tied up in those mittens is just gold, and she's like, just a you know a caged animal, just wanting to show her tits and and fuck, and she's all like, eh, uh, why, why, why can't I? Everything, yeah, no, like everything. I, I'm, I mean, I'm I, I, just seeing her do this, this movie. I know. I don't know, but I imagine. So now I'm a little bit in love with her, um, you know, as you do. And uh, and so I'm like, well, I want to go watch other stuff she's done. But I know it's just going to be downhill from this, you know, because this is right. such a fun role for her. Like she yeah. just chewed it up. She was like, she took this. She was like, this is going to be fucking fun. And then she made it. She just elevate like this is everything else yeah. is going to be is not going to be nearly as fun and funny uh i imagine uh, i i prove me wrong uh but uh yeah i'm yeah you got to check out search party and maybe the future the good place have you watched the good place no that's a show isn't it yeah it's a pretty great show i think oh. you probably you probably like it she was in a couple episodes of that i don't okay. remember her character or anything but um yeah does that got yeah Jack so Danson in it? yeah i like tony danza um that's okay. definitely one that like it's actually good if you go into it blind and just watch the first episode. That's one of the strongest pilot episodes that I've seen. Wow. Ever. What about The Office? The Office, um, I mean, was great. In yeah, terms well, of, like, pilot episodes that are, like, 10 out of 10 for me, it's, like, Breaking Bad pilot episode was, like, fantastic. Yeah. Um I think Cheers is kind of legendarily a great pilot episode. Um, but anyways, good place. is great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, Tina, there's a moment where she uh, finds one of the people's Adderall and ends up taking 30 Adderall and is just like, <laughs> completely unhinged. And in the trivia, it says there's a moment where she becomes hyper-focused on a fly buzzing around the room. And that was completely ad libbed. That was spur of the moment. It wasn't scripted. That was great. And it was a real fly, which is like, that's great. Total commitment. Yeah. Um. 
And then it's kind of, you know, yeah, the last the last act is all pretty predictable. It's all like, yeah, yeah these people are going to die and here are the rules and, you know, the people that you expect not to die are going to not die in the end. Um, the mother characters, the mother's character kind of sacrifices herself for Max after, you know, she understands what's going on and, and the rules. Um so that's there i will say the one kind of like thing that also drew me out of the movie other than the cgi was the age gap between tysa farmiga and malin ackerman they look almost the same age to me like they're not no yeah like i I, I malin ackerman is definitely older but it's not like not mother daughter age gap. She was know? insulted, yeah, for sure. Yeah, her <laughs> her real life person was like was like um I'm pretty hot, okay? So like Yeah. Well, I mean, it's weird because you have her Malin Ackerman play her mother, but in the story she starred when she was supposedly much younger before she had a kid in this horror movie. Mm. Um, but she looks exactly the same as when she is the mother as when she is in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I actually checked it and it looks like the, the age gap is pretty small for a mother daughter. So Malin Ackerman is 44 and Tysa Farmiga is 28. So only 16 year difference. So really, Malin that's Ackerman more would've... than I would have guessed. It's more than I, than I guessed. I thought it was going to be like five to ten you know but it actually is a 16 year age age gap but pretty young like you definitely if you wanted to make it like the actual age gap you'd have to specifically mention like i had you when i was 16 and it was the best decision ever made yeah um (laughs) it ends with like a pretty cool i guess machete fight between max and the jason stand in it's got moments you know it's 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 nothing you haven't seen before it's and then they wake up and it was all a dream but no they're actually in the sequel the end right whatever standard yeah very standard slasher end yeah yeah so they open it up to a sequel that's never going to happen but it was interesting like because the sequel was an obvious homage to halloween 2 yeah yeah i was like oh yeah immediately it was like oh i get that reference yeah and you get that reference, I assume, Bryce, that I just made. I get that reference. Um, so, final recommendations. Who would like the final girls? I mean, this is this is real easy, breezy, kind of PG-13. Um, this is something to sit down and watch with your 13-year-old kids who, you know, who are excited about, you know, they're, ha- ha- they're, they're excited to laugh. And watch something a little spooky, but really not, you know, like this is, this is an easy intro to horror movie. A lot of fun, pretty safe, pretty sexual, um, without showing anything. Uh, so, you know, I mean, temper your expectations, uh, for your kids as, as you may, but, uh, and you know, it's, this is a a fun one to sit down and not have to pay tremendous attention to. Yeah, I mean it's a fun one. Like it's um if you like slashers and you like horror comedy um and you've run out of like, you know, the best of the best mm-hmm. of of those meta movies like it's it's notable in its in its approach and the fantasy element and it's it's a fun watch. Um not a must see, but um I think for for fans looking for a little more horror comedy that's uh decent quality this is a good one yeah. we're happy to welcome emily Hagens. she's a writer director based in la she made her first feature film at the age of 12 in her hometown of austin texas uh, you might have heard of it it's a zombie movie called pathogen um, you can also see her in the documentary that uh, accompanies that movie zombie girl the movie uh, chronicling the process from start to finish since then she's been working in the industry and has written and directed several feature films horror anthology segments and other narrative projects welcome emily 
Thanks for having me. It sounds great. <laughs> oh, I should put in our applause. There we go. <laughs> You didn't uh, put that in. They were there. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to the studio audience. Um, so, yeah, I've got a couple questions for you. I, I watched uh, Pathogen last night and a little bit of the, the documentary. And, and I know, I mean, that's almost 20 years ago, but it is still really interesting, that story and, and uh, how early you started. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, just most general question right now, what, what are your favorite horror movies? Oh, cool. Um, <laughs> that was going to be about pathogen. I was gearing my brain up for something about Sorry, that. Sorry, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> no, I don't remember, uh, you know, being 12 that clearly, so I have to, like, <laughs> ramp up for that. Um, no, uh, yeah, my favorite horror movies, oh, my gosh. Um, luckily, I have a DVD shelf right in front of me, slash Blu-rays. Um, <laughs> I would say I always come back to, like, The Thing and... Um, I mentioned Dead Alive recently. I just I don't know why that's always stuck with me. Um, just a combination of, of I'm looking at the shelf, <laughs> like scanning for the perfect answer. Uh, you know, Night of the Living Dead. Um, just a lot of the classics, The Shining, of course. Um, but I, I always gravitated towards things that were a little silly and, and comedy. Uh, so it's it'll be something serious that's really like resonated with me and scared me, and then it'll be something like. Um, you know, a Shaun of the Dead or, or Dead Alive type thing. So I yeah. feel like I just like really oscillate between something a little goofy and fun and then something maybe like just, you know, like an It Follows or something. <laughs> it's just right. like, you know, just all sorts of things. Um, but... um, yeah, so you mentioned Dead Alive. Uh, in the documentary, it talks about how one of your inspirations for wanting to be a filmmaker was getting kind of obsessed with the Lord of the Rings films and, and Peter Jackson. Um, did you, it was unclear from the documentary. Did you ever actually get to meet Peter Jackson? I've never met him in person. Um, you know, when we started this interview, you said my last name correctly, Emily Haggins. And they said, a lot of people say it like Haggins, like Frodo Baggins. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I was bullied for liking Lord of the Rings so much, people would call me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said that. Those, those bullies stick in with me. Um, but uh, yes, I loved Lord of the Rings. I saw it more than 20 times. And <laughs> like, I just kept going. Uh, it just, you know, but what it was, is I was growing up around this time when these, these like really big, like, you know, fantasy franchises were coming out. It was a really big. I feel like part of um, the early 2000s and, and uh, it was really immersive to me in the world of, of film and, and movies. And so I was kind of like taking these things I liked about writing and, and my imagination and turning it into like a love of movies. Um, and you asked me if I'd met Peter Jackson, not in person, I wrote him a fan letter. I got a fan letter in return, not a fan letter, <laughs> a regular letter from a famous person uh, in return that uh was just very encouraging and 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 um you know you you know you love movies you live in austin i grew up in austin um you know keep keep doing it keep getting into the film scene there it's a great film scene and um it was really you know it was a pivotal point in my in my life at that age yeah it mentioned in the documentary that that peter jackson like connected you with um i can't remember his name from ain't it cool news mm -hmm. um and a little it? outdated that movie. <laughs> like a, <laughs> a little behind the times on what's current events on on that fellow. So right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he, but uh, yeah, it was unclear because it sounded like he invited you to a film festival where Peter Jackson was coming, but it never said you met him, which would be like a really uh, weird thing to leave out. But I was just curious about that. Yeah, um, no, that's a good question because he was there. I was at that film thing, and he was there, and I was like, "Oh my god, it's so cool!" But no, no, no in-person meeting of any sort. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, so I mean, thinking back, I don't have any questions about like what it was like filming it. I mean, you, listeners can watch the documentary about it, but I'm just curious um, if you what's the most recent that you've watched pathogen and is there anything that when you go back and watch it makes you cringe the most definitely like minute one to minute whatever <laughs> you know the whole time uh but <laughs> i uh 
you know, in a sense, though, because um, the movie just got re-released or kind of released for the first time because before that, I, you know, we were just kind of selling copies out of our garage when I was growing up with uh -huh. my parents. Uh, but it just got released by the American Genre Film Archive and they did a Blu-ray, they did a screening. And um, and then I kind of ha had to stick around <laughs> for the screening. And then I also <laughs> had to kind of watch it for the... Uh, um, What's it, the commentary and and, uh -huh. and there was something kind of interesting about doing those things because it reminded me of this kind of like I don't want to say innocence but like this kind of pure love of filmmaking that I had where it just was like just unfiltered mistakes and all and it wasn't like about getting the perfect shot or you know didn't have any money and it just was like it was interesting what lessons were kind of intuitive versus things I le had to learn like the more skills I had the more crew I had like, you know, as the projects went on, I felt like I was relearning things. I maybe intuitively was kind of trusting this pathogen at this, like, kind of kid-like mm -hmm. stage. And um, so it was really interesting to have to watch it because I, I I kind of could see these things were that reminded me to kind of trust that, you know, inner child. That sounds creepy. But, you know, like, that in, like right. the, whatever's, like, drew me into horror movies, drew me into filmmaking – and to kind of trust that instinct because there were just like little little things in there that were interesting to see on the surface of pathogen that maybe, you know, as I got older, oh, I'm a professional now. I don't do those things. <laughs> but there are like there are some kind of good things in there that yeah. are that are uh, not not good in quality, but good in like mindset and, and remembering that. No, it's, it's a really interesting experience watching it because it is, I mean, obviously a very charming movie. Um, and I don't think anyone would be surprised in a certain way to hear that it was made by a 12 year old. Uh, but I mean, honestly, I've seen worse movies made by adults <laughs> to, to be honest in terms of like, um, competence the number 23. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's probably not even, not even close, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it is really interesting watching it. Cause like, um, I mean, in the documentary, one of the first things that it shows you is, uh, is being asked like, you know, what shots are you going to do today? And you're like, shots? Like, what are you talking about? Like, you just, just like the 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 uh, vocabulary and, and stuff isn't there. But you watch it and you're like, at, at an early age, you, you had a pretty good idea of like um, kind of the grammar of film, even though it's like pretty, pretty rough. But like the shots of people drinking the water and, and kind of following the thread of like how this pathogen is spreading was – um it it worked it was great but uh, it has all the charm of like kind of uh ad-libbed dialogue by 12 year old 13 children year old children <laughs> yeah. it's pretty great and it made me think of of like when i made like little shorts with my friends um my friends were into video production and and yeah it's definitely cringeworthy going back to watch those movies but there's undeniable like like humor and and like we, we were on to something there like if we were more ambitious like maybe that that could have become a thing but yeah i mean it's really impressive that you're able to take that impulse um that a lot of people have of just like shooting shit with their friends and pushing it through to a full feature length film that's really cool there weren't a lot of summer camps when i was growing up uh well there weren't really any and now there's they have you know you could go to a, a summer camp for horror filmmaking for teenage girls between 10 and 15 like you can get so <laughs> specific you can go to that camp now but when i was growing up what i did instead was i got on film sets um and i kind of pa'd and my mom would come because i was a child and, and like you know i got to see the movies work in in progress and then i thought okay well if i really want to learn if i want to get to the next step i have to make a feature film and that was the logic in my brain because that's how i was learning how to make right. movies so um it it just kind of made sense at the time and um and i'd seen that raiders of the lost ark adaptation where those mm -hmm. kids had recreated it shot for shot so i'd, yeah. I'd have seen all these things like where i was like okay kids can do it like <laughs> There's no camp. There's no one telling me no. I have a yeah. camera. Let's do it. <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't from having all the resources or parents in the industry. Or I mean, as you saw in the documentary, it just kind of just came from doing our best and yeah. you know showing up each day. I'm I'm kind of curious. 
Um, just, I mean, just looking at your IMDb, some of your more recent stuff, I mean, you were a writer director on the VHS, uh, TV miniseries, uh, at least one of those, uh, one of those stories, uh, you did scare package and sorry about the demon just over your career. I guess my question is over your career, what have been your high points? You know, like what, what stuff have you really been like, wow, that's a, that's a thing now. Um, I, you know, I, I think each project has a, a lot of, you know, either, you know, just something about it that's been a great part of the experience. But, um, you know, I, I, I liked coming of age stories and I liked horror movies. So I was really oscillating between these kind of like teen projects and then these horror projects. And uh, at a certain point, I just really wanted to get back into horror. So kind of the, the way in was doing these horror anthologies like Scare Package and uh, the VHS thing was actually when Snapchat was releasing VHS branded, and it's the same franchise, but they were calling them video horror shorts, and they were on Snapchat. And um, I said, uh, you know, I'm not found footage is not something I'm I'm used to. Is it okay if it's not found footage? And they were like, that's fine. And I was like, it's a little bit off brand for VHS, but okay. And so it's kind of just like a horror short. I really like and respect the VHS films. Um, and it's actually kind of funny because coming back around to that, when we filmed Sorry About the Demon, uh, which just came out in January, um, the, uh, the the production was in this hotel and we were all kind of quarantined in the hotel because it was mid-COVID, like no vaccine. Like it was a lot of, um, and we were in Canada. And then simultaneously to that shoot, they were shooting VHS 94. So that's kind of happening on the other side of the hotel. And, um, and so when that movie came out and I saw like those hotel carpets and chairs and stuff, I was like, I know what that is. Um, but it's, it was like for a point in time that was very specific to the pandemic in Canada, <laughs> there were horror movies being shot in this holiday inn, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> there were horror movies. And, uh, it, it was very, um, it was a very interesting, uh, point in time. I feel like VHS keeps like reentering my life in interesting ways, <laughs> but yeah. That's cool. So, uh, your most recent film, Sorry About the Demon, Scare Package, and uh, maybe you're maybe not VHS. Those are all, um, were those all uh, kind of released under Shudder? Or... Um, well, the Snapchat, that that was a Snapchat uh, production before they started making the VHS feature films again, the, um, mm-hmm. the short I did. Uh, but um, th- yes, Scare Package was a Shudder film, and uh, and then we, we kind of reunited some of our team, some of our producers, the lead actor from our segment in Scare Package. Uh, and it was kind of like taking the, the I can't think of a better word than vibe <laughs> of our segment, because it's not the same story, it's not the same uh-huh. character, and turning it into a feature, because um, I already had the script for, for Sorry About the Demon. And, um, and they just, you know, they're like, well, let's, let's turn kind of the energy of your segment into this feature. And see how that turns out and that's what we did and it was i felt very fortunate to get to do that awesome um i had i had a question for you so recently i've i've kind of come to the end of my rope of being able to imbibe horror stuff you know it just i got all filled up and i was like it's hard now you know like and I'm curious to know, I know how I, my audience knows, like, w- why I like horror and how I got into it. Um, what about you? Why do you like horror? Why did you get into it? Yeah, I um, I was really scared of every everything. Uh, I, I liked, uh, you know, I got in with Lord of the Rings, and I remember another one was the Goonies. I don't know. I just like, I loved adventure movies and adventure stories. And, um, and, uh, I think, you know, part of it was seeing Lord of the Rings and then like tracing those actors to other films that they were in, in their, in their past. Cause I remember I saw like Flipper with like Elijah Wood and like, you know, like I'd been, I was like kind of diving deeper than like Lord of the Rings into like older films, but that were still for kids. Um, and then, but I wasn't really into horror and uh and then i saw this um a horror comedy that was called undead and it's a little bit featured in the documentary because it was such a pivotal um kind of point in my life because people were it's an australian 
uh, zombie horror comedy. <laughs> it's very weird, but it's it's very I, I like it a lot. And uh, it's on Shutter, <laughs> um, but uh, you know it really influenced me because people were laughing in the theater, and I really liked that communal experience of enjoying a horror movie and laughing. And I kind of got this little interest sparked in horror. So then I started watching actual horror movies after that and getting more into it. But um, I think part of me like just has this background that wasn't originally in horror. So that's why I've been drawn to like coming of age stories and other types of things as well. And I always, always, when I make horror movies, I want the characters to be likable. And um, that's just very important to me. And I don't want to make a movie. I, I enjoy these movies <laughs> as a viewer, but I don't want to make a movie where I don't care if the main characters live or die. I want to care if they live or die. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to be along for a journey, have their journey mirrored in the metaphors of horror. If it's and that's something that's important to me in that space, working as a filmmaker. But I'm also open to non horror. Product. I know what you mean. Like I know, I, I, you know, I, I can feel that too at times. But I think, yeah, I definitely did not start in horror. Started in the love of just movies, and then worked my way into it. I love horror now, but <laughs> yeah, the process. <laughs> So if you were given like a budget of $300 million to make anything you wanted, what, what would the movie be? Like, is there a dream project that you could just make a mainstream Hollywood film with a huge budget? What, what would you do? Yeah. If horror movie talk could, you know, let's, I mean, let's, let's think about this realistically. It. Let's go. Um, <laughs> You know, I think um, it would just be something where you could do, um, you know, create that practical, ma practical magic. Not that film. <laughs> but like create this like, like practical. <laughs> Reunite. That, Nicole Kidman. That was shot where I live. That was shot. That was shot like seconds away from my house okay, right I now. Got, I don't know how I, I'm, that's very strange. I <laughs> conjured that title. Conjured. Why am I, why am I saying this? Um, <laughs> but uh so pra practical, practical effects, effects, you mean. But creating that movie magic is what I was trying to say with practical effects, with big, you know, like kind of, um, you know, because I guess maybe because I'm thinking about these like Lord of the Rings movies or, you know, when the Harry Potter movies were first coming out. There are these like really big sets. Like in those first couple of Harry Potter movies, there's like, um, you know, there's like fire on this, like real fire in goblets on those sets with like hundreds of children around <laughs> and it's like it's just pretty cool i don't know like i just i feel like i would use that type of money to really world build something you know whether it's a genre type thing or not um, right. i i feel like so whatever it is you just want to put children in i would love to somehow. do that <laughs> no. um <laughs> just yeah something where but like it's a big, a popular fan, like thing. a big fantasy project or is there any like properties that you that you like um you know Outside of oh, Lord of the Rings and oh, Harry course, Potter. Yeah. Man, I sound like a big nerd. No, but I, uh, I, you know, I always throw out. I mean, it would be totally impossible because it's Dis Disney. But I loved Gargoyles. I want to see a big Gargoyles movie. <laughs> oh. oh, oh no! That is a you've, great uh, idea. Yes, you've, okay. you've tipped on Bryce's most important moment in his childhood. <laughs> Now you have horror movie talks for <laughs> backing. Let's get that money. Um, <laughs> once, yeah, once we get three hundred million dollars, we'll wire it. right I don't to know you. if you've seen my newest movie, but um, about ten years ago, uh, I was making another movie. It's coming of age, not horror movie. Uh, called Grub Tony Phillips, and the main character, played by my friend Tony, uh, he and I were talking about how much we loved gargoyles, and he was doing the voice of the like you know it was an age of gargoyle thing i'm not gonna even try but he was doing that intro voice and he did uh -huh. this like kind of crazy demonic sounding <laughs> like voice for the intro of gargoyles and i filmed it and i still have the video uh somewhere and um and then when we were making this movie sorry about the demon i wanted the voice i wanted the demon to have its own personality and it's not like you know just some digital voice that was like a real character that somebody is uh you know syncing up with everyone else's performances throughout the movie whenever they got possessed it was like this one guy demon guy that's unhappy and and he has his own kind of voice and personality and uh so i called tony like 10 years later and said can you do your garbage voice for the film and he did he did every uh 
you know, he it's it, so if you watch the movie, uh, just imagine somebody was originally trying to do the intro of, of Gargoyles and it became this demon. It's very minimally altered. That is, it is very true to what he can do with his own voice. <laughs> but uh, that's how that's how that started. There's a little bit of a Gargoyles uh, reference point <laughs> in the film. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, like a uh, kind of a cult Formative. fan base be- behind gargoyles. Like, I remember I didn't. It was probably probably came out kind of on the <coughs> the end of my reign with Disney Afternoon or or whatever. I think it was on Disney Afternoon, wasn't it? Or was that know. a Saturday morning one? Anyways, I, I remember watching several episodes and and like it was a super high quality show and really cool and like had a lot of those fantasy and world building elements that uh, was kind of ahead of its time for like a children's tv show uh or cartoon but yeah that's that's a pretty pretty great choice um let's see um what's your advice for anyone that wants to write and direct their own horror film yeah i would i would say to um you know kind of just it sounds very simple, but this is what was told to me that got me through it <laughs> was to persevere and just, you know, your own limits. And so if, if, you know, people are telling you, well, you need this, you don't need that, whatever it is, just, you know, trust your instincts and, and just persevere and just get it done and get through it. Because if you've, if you've never made a movie before finishing the movie is like kind of the biggest, the biggest thing where you learn the most lessons, like getting it done, figuring out this is what you want to do. So I always just say persevere because that's what was told to me like <laughs> and it really helped right yeah good advice um are you working on anything now or anything coming up that you're looking forward to working on yeah i have a, a christmas horror project that we're in, like early stages of, of working on so it's a little more horror than my oh, last cool. film but uh which is a little more comedy <laughs> um but there's still like the sweetness like what we're talking about a little bit like about just likable you know just there's just a good like a nice cast of characters are, are you allowed to give like an elevator <laughs> pitch um maybe not. yeah are you allowed to give like a the two sentence to, summary i don't know i haven't not so far i haven't been able to i mean not like i have a can't it's more like i don't know if i'm supposed to <laughs> um but uh, oh, okay. just, it's uh, it's a little bit of return to the teen space with horror and Christmas all set on one night. I don't know what else I can say, but it's not like a Star Wars movie, so I feel stupid. Right. But <laughs> you know, just uh, I <laughs> no, it's fine. Is it is that going to be a Shutter original too, or is um, that coming out I somewhere mean, else? So far, it's kind of with some other folks, but since I'm working kind of for them, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see but i did write it it's my own thing don't right. don't hush hush yes. i don't want to ruin your uh, good it. thing <laughs> right um i have i have uh, a question before uh before we get too close to the end here so but anybody listening uh can find out more about emily by uh just googling her but but if you want to go straight to the stores for some reason you go to a place called cheesy nuggets.com and that's the name of her production's company why cheesy nuggets um, i think it just came from starting a company when i was a child <laughs> just thought it was really funny <laughs> registered it with the bank <laughs> i'm i am salivating okay. so it's working <laughs> um yeah i just thought it was a funny thing to say as a kid and now it's like kind of just legally my persona across <laughs> everything so um that's, that's how it came to be uh yes and I'm same cheese nice. and nuggets on other things as well, um, but like Instagram and, and Twitter and stuff. But um, trying not to, I'm, I'm I'm not on those as much as I used to be, just for you know my my brain still working. <laughs> mm-hmm. Smart. Well, you're actually making things, and so like, how can you rot your brain with social media when you're actually trying to produce something useful? Hopefully, hopefully, but I can't resist <laughs> I the dog videos. My, my attention span is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, same. Um, so so thanks emily for for coming on um just want to point user or listeners to where they can find your latest film so sorry about the demon and your segment on scare package are both on shutter um if you want to watch the um 
the pathogen movie when that she made when she was 12 that's on um tubi right now um ad supported and then if you want to watch the uh documentary about that I, uh, I found it on canopy which you can get through your library card um but thanks so much and uh we'll have you stick around because now we're gonna tr transition over to a brand new game i'm calling Ooh, on, a pull, new game pull it up Look at you coming all coming in here with a new game. The final girl quiz. I don't know if you guys see the full slide unless you double click on it, but Fart um, will take care of it. Uh so final girl quiz. We're gonna go over some of the uh most notable final girls in horror film. So these will all be questions about Jessica Roth from Happy Death Day, Jamie Lee Curtis from Halloween. Nev Campbell from Scream, Alexandria Daddario from Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh, Heather Langenkamp from A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, and Sigourney Weaver from the Alien franchise. Mm. So, interesting that you chose Jessica Roth. In my opinion, I can. It seems like she's <coughs> in my brain. She's edged out by a lot of people. Well, you know, I'm up. seeing a type though. I get it. <laughs> All right, so we've got a bunch of questions. I'll have David play against Emily. Um, David, could you just keep track of the score on a yes? I will me? bring up a thing. Okay. All right. To start out, uh, which final girl's character inspired the Metroid video game? Uh, who goes first? Do we buzz uh, in? Like, why don't how's you, this work? Yeah. Why don't you buzz in? So say your name. Say. David or Emily, or or Emily, you can say cheesy nuggets. Um, that might be a little more uh, have more plosive energy on it. So, who wants to go first? Buzz. So, okay. Is it Sigourney Weaver? You're correct. It's Sigourney Weaver. I would oh, check that. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica Roth. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, which final girl bought a house in L.A. and lives a couple of streets away from her co-star from We Have Always Lived in the Castle, Tysa Farmiga, which was also the star of The Final Girls? Buzz? Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't okay, know. Okay. Uh, I'll, this is go like ahead, Emily. 100% of Alexander Daddario. I don't know. That wrong that was right <laughs> alexandra daddario you are correct i i still don't understand the question <laughs> she looks close to tysa to tysa tysa <laughs> sorry yeah tysa farmiga okay yeah all right which final now girl... i can triangulate <laughs> all right which uh final girl is the godmother of jake gyllenhaal and maggie gyllenhaal oh buzz David. That's that's got to be Jamie Lee Curtis. It's Jamie Lee Curtis. That's cool. I mean, I didn't know that. <laughs> of Jake Gyllenhaal. Why? What are they, what's the relation? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Dutch, <laughs> Dutch stuff. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> well, I mean, the more obvious unless one you is, would <laughs> is that she was also the daughter of Tony Curtis and um, what's her name Lee from Psycho. I can't remember. Yeah, just, just I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is just that Hollywood right. blood. Yeah. She's a uh, Nepo baby, you know, one of the original Nepo babies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Which final girl not only has beautiful piercing, well, sorry, which final girl has beautiful piercing blue eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Buzz. David? That's... Okay, Rice is shining through here. Yeah, it's Alexandria Daddario, oh, obviously. Is, sorry, right. I, I thought you would have known that one. <laughs> well, I mean, I've heard a few things that you've said. Oh, Mo I, That has been a refrain of yours, actually. I think this game is um, maybe a little bit one-sided towards David, but... I, I, okay, go on. Well, well moving on. Um, yeah. Uh, which final girl studied ballet at eight years old? I don't know. <laughs> 
Take a guess, Emily. Uh, ballet. I don't, they all could have done ballet. Uh, Nev Campbell. I don't, we haven't clicked on her yet. <laughs> Who is it? I don't know. Oh. It was Jessica I've Ross. I've met her. I should know oh, something yeah, about wrong. her. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, she's You've super met her? smart and nice, and I, I liked her. I think she's great. I don't know her. Like, I'm, So when I'm I not, said I'm, that, when I said that thing that I said, was that upset? I, I met her <laughs> once, but it was it was delightful. But they're not. We're not. I don't have her contact information. <laughs> okay, we're not best friends. But that's okay. very cool of her. Then how? Like, yeah, <laughs> she she's um, yeah, she's really great in those movies. Not a lot of trivia on IMDb, I will say. Um, let's go with uh, which final girl had Charlie Sheen as the best man at her wedding? Um, her wedding to David Leroy Anderson, who was Sheen's little league teammate from grade school. Sorry, here's your options. Buzz, David, Heather Langenkamp. <gasps> Heather Langenkamp oh. is correct. I David, figured they're you're, you're about the same this. age. All right, next, um, to Emily. You know, you yeah. got to buzz in <laughs> on these early. Are you gonna get? You're gonna get sweet. I have. Um, I have a um, fear of like competition and like um, <laughs> games. <laughs> but it's okay. I don't mind losing. <laughs> well, we have mon- many more games to play. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, which final girl is not only beautiful but also really cool and intelligent? Uh, Jessica Roth from a personal experience. She was, she was really nice. Oh wow! I mean, no, that's so sorry. Sorry. That's hang rough. on. I'd it's like actually to steal Alexander this buzz. Daddario. Yeah. 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 No comment. All right. Um, <laughs> Which which final girl's last name is also the name of a folding chair from IKEA? A folding chair. <laughs> oh, uh Buzz. Yeah. He- Heather Langenkamp. Heather Langenkamp. <laughs> Are these real? <laughs> oh. No. I mean, yeah. There's I mean, you know, lines. we're real. We're well researched. <laughs> she is... does have piercing blue <laughs> eyes. <laughs> the other. No, well, and yeah. Langenkamp. Right. Right. Yeah. You get uh, well, I mean, check your IKEA catalog. It's it's a really popular chair. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> so so you said you were you said you were scared of games. Is this maybe getting the gears rolling <laughs> for a new? I mean, a horror movie talk based horror movie would be. I mean, there would be dozens of people <laughs> lined up to see it. I do have a, a script <laughs> that does feature my fear of games because I was on a game show once when I was. Uh, pre pre pathogen. I was on a Nickelodeon um, slime time live, and and I won. And they never sent me my bike. <laughs> that I won. And, uh, what? And I think I just have retained. They didn't yeah, send you I, your I, bike. What was the what was the I'm game show? Life. And uh, and I thought you know when I won this show in second grade, I thought. This is the height of my career. <laughs> Whatever my career is, this is the top. And I never, I never got that bike. I've never ridden a bike since then out of protest. <laughs> but anyways. Okay. Now wait, 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 wait. There's so much here. We're gonna have to stop the game for a minute. Okay. So you said it was Slime Time Live. Yeah. Is that correct? Uh huh. Now, have you watched the Nickelodeon documentary no. on Hulu? No. No. What did they talk about that? Okay. Well, I'm, they I mean, it's... Oh, no, your bike. no, I mean, so they're, really like, about they're like, Emily, <laughs> come pick up your bike. <laughs> well, I had a meeting at Nickelodeon, and I brought this up, so I was like, maybe I can get that bike, you know? And they just laughed at me. <laughs> so I was like, they get look- that bike. <gasps> um, so, yeah, one day. But do they talk about... Yeah, you should have used that... Sorry, I'm Did getting you use angry. that in, in leverage with your negotiations? Like, oh, listen... Um, He's throwing a huffy, though. You kind of owe me one. So enough of this general like, meeting. <laughs> you should produce my show since you owe me at least, like, you know, $150 worth of yeah. bicycle. Well, if you take the interest, compounding interest on that bike. Exactly. You know, yeah, make a feature like that. Uh, I did incorporate this story into <laughs> one of my scripts because I, it has given me a slight uh, aversion <laughs> to game, game show formatting. <laughs> uh 
uh, it, it's, I don't know, get, activities. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's my bitches. that's my kind of fun fun fact, um, and of of my life. <laughs> but all right, well, let's face your fears and continue on with our final girls quiz. Um, where were we? Uh, Langen camp. We just finished uh, talking about the folding chair. Okay, which final girl was considered for the role of Alex Forrest in Fatal Attraction, uh, which went to Glenn Close? Buzz. David? That's got to be Jamie Lee. Emily, you got a guess? Because uh, he's okay. wrong. Let me think. Fatal Attraction. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess. I don't know. Can I guess Nev Campbell again? No one's going with her. None of these questions are about her. <laughs> Is that wrong? It's uh, Sigourney Weaver was considered yeah, for that role. You're not. None of the questions have uh, the answer of Nev Campbell, so I keep uh, going betting on that. <laughs> right, that's fair. It's, we it's, take these games very <laughs> seriously. Yes, very. Um, um, you know, Emily. Honestly, I don't think you can win, but we got to go. We got to move through because um, the you know the good news is the the uh, runners up prize is a new bicycle. <laughs> So, Don't tease yes. me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, which final girl is married to producer Andrew Form, uh, but is too good for him and should probably uh, get with someone much fatter and you know, funnier? based on the the previous questions, Buzz, this sounds like Alexander Daddario from my. Uh... <laughs> good, you pulled through. It's Alexander Daddario. Wow. This is, I mean, these were all trivia facts from IMDb. If you oh, my gosh. All right. Which final girl once said that Dan Aykroyd was the best on-screen kisser she ever worked with? <laughs> uh, Buzz. David. It's got to be Jessica Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, you got to guess? Uh, 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 Dan Aykroyd? think about mm -hmm. what were what movie was he in one of these oh, wait sorry what am i saying what movie did he share with one of these actresses think of one movie with dan Aykroyd well this is it. like career-wide it's not necessarily horror movies um, um but yeah you might want to think about age uh, no i mean it's hollywood so age gap probably doesn't matter that much sigourney weaver <laughs> i don't know Oh, it's Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, I would have thought I would have thought mm. Sigourney Weaver. Um, wait, what? Wait, Sigourney Weaver was in That's Ghostbusters, what I was going right? With. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, it's a good. It's got to be Sigourney Weaver. Guess. You know, there's some curveballs <laughs> in here. Um, which final J girl would probably really like me if she got to know me and should really give me a chance to be her friend? No one's going to buzz in? Buzz. No, that's that's Alexander Daddario. Thank you. All right. We got a couple more. Uh, which final girl posed for a swimsuit photo, believing it to be intended for a catalog, only to see it appear on a Toronto billboard? That's sad. <laughs> There's a... Wait, I'm, I that? don't know. This is... Let's see here. Canadian. I'm going to buzz and say Jessica Roth. It was actually Nev Campbell. Yeah, that sounds like a little bit oh, uh, like a behind the times story, <laughs> behind current, you know, standards, maybe. <laughs> right. That checks I know. Out. That's, it's unfortunate. I mean, you should really uh, be concerned about women's feelings and and not objectifying them final question which final girl would probably have two kids with me uh named chester and amelia that would get along great with my kids from a previous marriage buzz david that's alexandria daddario, alexandra sure. daddario wow yeah how did yeah. you know well, it's all uh, right do you want the tallies i, I know yeah, how many i tally. got right okay <laughs> <laughs> surprisingly um i mean i don't it it all pans out on paper though uh emily has 27 points and i have six. <laughs> oh wow so, those questions worth a lot. there you go 
the final. Wow. <laughs> the final girl quiz. The f- you you the are final. the wow. final girl. Yeah. By default. Thanks for participating. Um, <laughs> well, that was fun. Um, you know, hard questions, <laughs> hard hitting questions. Um, we'll get your bike in the mail just right after, right after the call. It. Can uh, we? I think we can get her a bike. <laughs> It has to be a child size bike. I'm serious. <laughs> no. But... <laughs> right. It will be for sure. <laughs> but yeah. It's, um... If you want to stick around after the recording, we could get your mailing address and mail you a, a Huffy. <laughs> oh, just a tiny bike. Right. I'm... It's an offer. It's on the table. It is oh, on the table. I don't know if I'd even remember how to ride. Um... <laughs> but, well, how, so how long has it how long has it been since you've ridden a bike out of you know since you're still within your protest? Uh, I mean that was um, the last I was on the show the last day of second grade like my last day of school came home from school scheduled to be on the show um, and uh, yeah not since not since then I'm thirty <laughs> and you've have not ridden I've ridden a bike an since. exercise bike <laughs> but not a not a moving bike. Yeah, but dude, my I, wife, same way. She's like, at some point in her childhood, she was just like, <laughs> "Fuck bikes," and then n- never again. Like, and so I take the kids out riding the bike, and Carrie's like, "I'll walk." <laughs> I was like, "Really?" <laughs> and she's like, "I got her on a bike once, and it was like, look, <laughs> like, oh, okay, I see, okay, wow, I sh- really shouldn't have said that." Man, maybe fart. Maybe you can cut that out. <laughs> no, it's a kindred spirit. We gotta be um, no more bikes. <laughs> no. Um, There's yeah. dozens of us again. <laughs> yeah, we should probably mention Emily. Our our editor is named. Oh, Fart okay. Simpson, so we're just... um, um, yeah. I mean, I I respect the commitment and the the uh, the ire to commit to not riding a bike because of nickelodeon and i'm sure that makes a great story we have to watch that documentary um all right so well th- yeah <laughs> well thanks it's a great, to emily it's a great for, for coming on the show uh thank you to all our listeners and especially our patrons if you want to help the show share it with a friend if you want to see emily's Wait. latest projects go to shutter.com um again if you want to see that first film of hers uh pathogen you can go on Tubi. Did you have something to say, David? Yeah, I wanted to ask Emily if there's anything she wanted to plug before we go. You know, I would just say the last movie. Sorry about the demon. Uh, that's my latest film, and that's on Shudder, as you mentioned. So uh, if you like, you know, comedy and demons and uh, a lot of cakes for some reason, a lot of cakes in that movie, uh, then check it out. <laughs> Yeah, and if if you guys want to get a 30-day free subscription to Shutter, use that HMT code. And I think I think that's still working. <laughs> so, so give that a shot. <laughs> All right. Um and we'll see you next time. If you want to give us a call, call 682-253-4468 to leave us a voicemail. Until next time, we'll see you on the flippity flop 80. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. You lose. Is that me? Yes, it is. I just had to stroll through the scraggly wood. He had no face. Horror. Wow, that didn't sound good.